This morning, the Finance Committee meets <clears throat> to discuss President Biden's nomination of Chief Chris Magnus to lead Customs and Border Protection. I want to thank Chief Magnus for joining the committee today and for his willingness to take on this extraordinarily difficult job. Chief Magnus is the Chief of Police in Tucson, Arizona. He started out in Lansing, Michigan, and his career in public safety has taken him east, west, uh, north, and south. If confirmed, Chief Magnus would lead an agency with tens of thousands of employees. Customs and Border Patrol is responsible for over 300 points of entry into the country, and it enforces the country's immigration laws. The committee has a special interest in ensuring that Customs and Border Patrol's trade mission does not get short shrift. Enforcing trade laws vigorously and working to stay ahead of trade cheats is absolutely key to protecting jobs, businesses, and innovations in America, and Customs and Border Patrol is right at the heart of that challenge. Too often in the past, including during the Trump administration, trade enforcement has been a secondary issue. The committee has worked hard over the last few years to, custom, to give Customs and Border Patrol fresh and modern trade enforcement tools. The goal is to help our trade enforcers work faster and communicate more closely with businesses and other organizations that can spot the trade cheats. And these trade cheats are definitely undercutting American workers and they're undercutting American jobs. Those upgrades have already begun to make a big difference over the slower, outdated approach of previous decades. In my view, we all understand there is room for improvement, so this committee is going to look to continue to look for ways, and I've discussed this with uh, the chief, to strengthen our trade enforcement even further. One such issue that's posing a serious danger to America's values and our jobs is the use of forced labor in China and elsewhere. It is an abhorrent practice, modern-day slavery. The Finance Committee's authority over trade laws is a big part of what needs to be an all-out effort to end that modern-day slavery. Until just a few years ago, there had been a major loophole in the laws on the books that allowed some products made by forced labor to be imported to the country. Senator Brown and I wrote the law that closed that loophole in 2016. Since then, for example, the United States has taken action to block the import of cotton and tomatoes picked by slave labor in western China. However, there are many more areas and industries in which forced labor continues to be an ongoing threat to American workers. In addition to goods uh, coming from China, Senator Brown and I are concerned about the import of mica, palm oil, and cocoa, which may also be produced with forced labor. Customs and Border Patrol not only investigates allegation of forced labor and demands remediation where appropriate, it also enforces the ban on forced labor products entering the country. This is a hard job, and once again, it requires quick action, lots of discussion and communication in an ongoing way with American businesses, human rights organizations, and others. This committee is going to continue to work on this issue in the months and years ahead, and we look forward to hearing from Chief Magnus on that subject today. Finally, immigration is not explicitly in the Finance Committee's jurisdiction. It is sure, however, to come up today uh, from members. The Trump administration made it fashionable to believe that enforcing our immigration laws required abusing immigrants and asylum seekers at the border. <clears throat> Recently, the American people saw images of what that mindset looks like in the real world. It is absolutely, unquestionably wrong. I start this proposition, and you and I have talked about this, uh, Chief, with the proposition that enforcing our immigration laws and treating people humanely, those two goals are not mutually exclusive. We can do both, and we're going to insist on both. Embracing immigration and asylum seekers is not only a part of our national character, it's a big economic winner for America. And I appreciate the discussions we had on that matter. Close with one last point on an issue that dates back to before Chief Magnus's nomination. In the summer of 2020, the Trump administration deployed federal law enforcement troops in cities, including my hometown of Portland. As the chief knows, I was hearing from uh, schools like the Cottonwood School in Portland, where they got up in the morning, they saw tear gas canisters in their sandbox. And clearly, there were some major abuses of power at that time. For many months, I demanded review of policies regarding, for example, the use of chemical munitions at schools. 
there now has been significant progress on these issues. I want to thank the Secretary, Secretary Mayorkas, for that progress, and I look forward to working with the Secretary and the Department on this subject, because some of my neighbors in Portland are still reeling from the harm that the Trump administration <coughs> inflicted on them. With that, uh, Chief, I want to congratulate you again on your nomination. Thank you for being here. We're going to have a good discussion today.